I'm speaking with Matthew Goldman, founder and CEO of Wallaby Financial. And you guys deal with a lot of sort of software development for credit card processing or just a credit card authentication, correct? That's right. What we do is help users to better understand how to use their credit cards and what credit cards they should use to help them save money. So you gave a great presentation regarding, you know, sort of best use cases of wearables and when they work and when they don't work. And I, and I must agree with you that authentication is definitely a very, very hot area because passwords, as we have proven over and over again, do not work. Take me down that road. Why do you think authentication is going to work so well in wearables? Well, people hate passwords and they're hard to remember and they're a huge security hole, but it's really hard to fake someone's heart rate or fingerprint or EKG. Now, some of these things are possible, but they're much harder to do. And so using wearables as a way to get on people's bodies, understand who they are and authenticate them for a huge variety of purposes, from just checking their email to unlocking their car to doing a payment. Well, pretty much every single password you're dealing with, too. I mean, it could literally be everything. You wouldn't ever have to deal with a password. Or it could be part of sort of a biometric solution, sort of, you know, that whole philosophy of something I own, something I, I am, and something I know, right? That's right. I mean, it should be part of a multi-factor tool so that you can be really secure when you need to. And you can use signals, like if you've recently put the device on or you're in a weird geolocation, to ask for a secondary factor. But again, you are yourself, and it's very hard to fake that. And that's why it's such a good authentication tool, and it can be plugged into any different service you might be using. So what solutions have you found so far that are, that are the most promising in this area? So everyone's in a very early stage, and it's hard to know what's going to win out. But we're really excited about the NIMI band from NIMI of Toronto, Canada. And it actually measures your EKG and authenticates you with just a simple wristband. And we're working on understanding how to integrate that into our apps today. So what is sort of, I guess, the first goal? I mean, is the first goal credit card processing? Because I, I, I see in both the phones and now in watches, that seems to be the, the, the highest desire in authentication. probably has a close connection to a, sort of financial gain, yes? It does, and I think that's the hard part about doing the payment part is that everybody is involved in that chain. You have the merchant, and you have the phone manufacturer, and you have the processors, and so there's a lot of coordination. So the other way to look at it is just securing your financial data. You have your bank app on your phone, and it has a lot of personal data. So how do you secure that in the most secure way so that if you do happen to leave your phone or someone does pick it up, they can't see everything about your life and then ultimately go on to steal your identity or use your funds? Have you used your phone to make any uh, payments whatsoever? So I, I have used it to make payments uh, through apps for things and including in real life. And I've used things like uh, Level Up with QR codes, but I haven't used some of the more uh, modern things or perhaps newer things like we have uh, Samsung Pay coming out later this summer and we obviously have Apple Pay that's only a few months old. I have still have to upgrade my, my phone myself. You're a big Apple uh, fan and yet you haven't done that? You haven't uh, done the Apple Pay yet? Well, you know, contracts and things, right? It wasn't quite time. I have thought I should wait at least a year before I switched phones again. Awesome. Hey, Matthew, thanks for your time. All right, thank you.